30 years after Ted Bundy's execution in Florida, Grand Junction investigators are still looking into a local cold case surrounding a young girl Bundy claims to have killed. From a Netflix series to an upcoming movie, public fascination has made many think twice about all the attention. KX5 News reporter Colette Bordelon is at the place where the victim was last seen. Colette? That's right. I'm down here near the 5th Street Bridge, which is right behind me. This is the area that Denise Oliverson was last seen in back in 1975, and the FBI has placed Ted Bundy on the Western Slope at the time of her disappearance. However, officers with the Grand Junction Police Department still mark her as a missing person because they say they're waiting on actual evidence before closing this case. They say time heals all wounds, but some wounds never heal completely. If we go back to April of 1975, when 24-year-old Denise Oliverson was pedaling to her parents' house, but never made it home, a moment frozen in time for the Grand Junction Police Department. Haunting both Commander Clint Newton and Detective Sergeant Sean Crocker. You want to know what happened and you want to know why. You want to know the why and how and who did it. That crime occurred many years ago, but they're still a human being to us and they're still a face to their family. Denise was last seen around 3 p.m. riding a yellow bicycle, similar to this one, near the 5th Street Bridge. Officers found that bicycle along with her shoes the next day, about a half a mile from her home. I know that there are strong investigative ties or leads connecting the disappearance of Denise Oliverson to the time that Ted Bundy was in Grand Junction, Colorado. Connections some reported closed the case, and even the Colorado Bureau of Investigation listed Denise as both a missing person and a homicide case. We're at the point where we've heard a lot of things. We just want some confirmation on some of those things as far as statements that Ted Bundy may have made. Bundy apparently confessed to killing Denise right before his death. Mr. Bundy says that he discarded her in the river or put her in the river. From there, we don't know, but the body has never been found, never been discovered of Denise Oliverson, so she is still missing. But those currently at GJPD have never heard his confession. That if we could find those recordings, if we could find that evidence, that would lead to his confession or to his whereabouts or his direct knowledge of that case, we might be able to clo close this case out. Even if they heard the recording, can you trust a convicted killer known to try to extend his time on death row? We're not just going to take him at face value. We would like to look into him as far as possible and exhaust all of the leads and exhaust the possibilities of having false information. If it wasn't false information and Denise really did end up in the river, what would have happened next? So if they're trapped underwater and they don't ever come back up, they'll eventually decompose, but it takes a lot longer. But if they float back to the surface and then wash up on sh shore, then those changes happen at an accelerated rate. Coroner Victor Yawn says the body could have traveled all the way to Utah, and the time of year could have played a role in its disappearance. During the spring, when the river is running full force and there's a lot of runoff, there's a better chance of them being washed away and never found. And ours is 1919 here. Flipping through decades of documentation on Bundy, there's a trend. So a lot of times with these type of cases, they focus a little bit more on the person who was the perpetrator as opposed to the victims, especially with the Theodore Bundy case. Aaron Schmitz from the Museums of Western Colorado says very little was written about Denise, but maybe the continued investigation into her case can make up for lost time. It's important because these families didn't get a shot at closure. Which is exactly why Crocker and Newton say they're not giving up. And if you're telling someone a story, they need to know the end. It takes a old salty investigator that had to put in the blood, sweat and tears of doing good police work, not relying on Google, not relying on the internet to solve things. You have to get out and talk to those people. You have to get out and re-interview those people and take a good hard look at the evidence you have in front of you. They hope the truth will one day come to light. We really just want people to know that we do care, and that's why we keep those cases assigned to people, and that's why I go back and personally look at those cases and read all the reports because I want to know more and find out what happened.
and be done with the case and close it out. Because just a little more could be what cracks the case. Commander Newton says they have several cold cases at the police department right now, and he wishes he had a little bit more manpower to assign people onto them full time. He also says retired detectives from the Vail Police Department and the 9th Judicial District may have access to that critical recording, but it has never found its way to Grand Junction. First on the Western Slope, Colette Bordelon, KREX 5 News.